Hey, Megan, welcome to uh, the channel. Welcome to uh, our YouTube channel and our podcast. And I'm really excited to have you. I mean, we've been uh, knowing each other for, I think it's been about a year, maybe a year and a half. Probably, now. yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I'm really excited to really dive into your story, the amazing stuff that you're doing, how uh, this, uh, this, these concepts have been able to release you maybe into uh, other things that you're doing outside of uh, Grandma's Wealth Wisdom and uh, the uh, master class that we've created. So um, first off, um, yeah, how how are you? How how um, how are things right now? Um, first, let me say thank you for having me, Brandon. It's it's a, an honor to be here. So thank you. Um, things are really good. Things are great. And um, you know, I know you've walked with me through a lot of that. Um, I will get into this, but you know, I was in a job and I needed to leave and it was hard to stay and it just, you know, I needed to leave the nine to five and, and you helped me get out of it. So we're kind of living on the other side of that now and our family's doing really well. We're thriving and I'm so grateful. And unfortunately, as a result of COVID, um, it, we, a fortunate blessing in all that is we've been able to spend a lot more time together. So it's been really good. Fact. So things are really good. Thanks for asking. So it's been, so you, you left, you, I mean, you were at a job that you didn't like, uh, right. wanting to step into something and COVID happened um, and all of this crazy stuff. Now, um, I remember uh, whenever you were, were um, it was about a year, year or so, that you really like, your job was like, just not, not a life-giving thing. Right. Um, and and how what were those feelings like what what were you feeling why did you have to like why did you say i need to do something else like what was the driving force so, i had been there 16 years with the same company great company great people in fact a lot of those people are lifelong friends of mine that are still in touch um mm -hmm. so nothing bad to say there it was just working for someone else and with different um you know that company's goals and belief systems didn't necessarily align with mine. I was looking for more meaning and more purpose and more passion in what I do. Um, but besides that too, the dynamic on the team had shifted a little, kind of the environment had become a little toxic and um, mm -hmm. you know, you only get this one life and you have this family. And I, I just was so drained of energy when I got home, just trying to solve for all the things and and the emotions and the energy suck that it would it had become, um, yeah. and I just knew that that's not what you know. Faith is a big part of my life. I knew it wasn't my calling. So when you're not working in your calling, I think it can be tremendously draining. And that's where it got. You know, it was getting to where I didn't want to leave there hating everybody and everything there because uh, mm -hmm. that they deserved that. They were great. I these are people I love. So. I, I knew I needed to step away from that and really follow what I'm truly passionate about, what I knew in my heart the Lord was calling me to, and and to create more space for my family. I had um, worked all through my children's, you know, both I have two bio kids and one foster daughter. And so uh, with both pregnancies, I only took six weeks off and went right back to work, um, partially because financially we needed to make that happen that way, but also because the work was there and I needed to get back to it. So um, after all that, my son is eight. That's my oldest child. I, you know, I'd missed a lot. And so I don't regret. I can't say I regret things. They, they played out the way that they needed to. But mm -hmm. now in this season, I'm so grateful that God had aligned opportunities for me to be able to kind of take that time for my family. Yeah. So, so has it been easy as you left that job and then you started your entrepreneur endeavor? Uh, mm -hmm. Has it been a bed of roses? Absolutely not. <laughs> so um, I started selling on Amazon in Q4 of 2018 while I was still employed. You know, mm -hmm. I left my job in March of 2020. And as you know, Brandon, but of course our audience doesn't know this. Um, 
I left when I had not yet made my goal of supplementing my income by at least, you know, half of what I used to make. I was making six figures at this job. I did, I was nowhere close to that. And part of that was, I didn't have the, the time to build the business while I was working mm -hmm. this job that was draining all my time. Um, and I really didn't know that there were any other options. I have a 401k, I had a 401k and I thought, you know, you can't access that money. There's no way they'll penalize you and there'll be nothing left. And um, I, you know, in the course of, I'm, I'm involved with the Jim Cockrum community, the proven Amazon course, mm -hmm. the PAC team. So in those circles, I started hearing about other options, you know, that there are ways to access your 401k and, really bank on yourself that method and i i was intrigued and i thought this could this be is this a scam you know you all those mm -hmm. things go through your mind um but anyway in getting to know the team and then finding you and getting to know my options um i was thankfully able to to make the the switch the transition into being self employed um of course it was not a bed of roses, as you mentioned, but you know what? I was so happy for all those growing pains. I was so ready. And mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people today that are so ready to step away from something that is not their own or they work for someone else, you know, their whole lives. And you have got this nine to five, just to the proverbial rat race. I wanted to get out of it. So um, it wasn't a bed of roses, but I, I welcomed all of those issues and things I had to solve for because they were mine. And I was grateful. Yeah. Really, really happy for that. <laughs> well, and I think um, uh, your husband was also impacted by COVID because he runs in the um, in the uh, food side of things. And yeah. if anybody knows um, anything about that, that industry has probably been hit the hardest. Um, yeah. And so then you left your job doing this uh, thing with the, the foster child uh, while still running a business. How have you kept your um, your focus, your sanity? What's been your um, building that hope in you? I think um, because I knew this was, I was stepping away to, to discover more of what God had created me to go do with this mm -hmm. life. And so um, that is my sanity. For one, we faith is such a central part of our home. So we're, you know, we're avid churchgoers. These are the kind of things that we keep in our routine because we know that without them, we start to lose focus. So yeah. um, <clears throat> those are the things that we keep going uh, regularly. But the other things were, you know, it was so um, clarifying in this time that we all were on lockdown. Uh, you know, for one, people were really searching for answers if you don't know or if you don't have mm -hmm. a faith. Um, and so gratefully we do. And as, but in that time, we were even kind of clarifying our own decisions and, and you know, choices in life. And is this what I really want to go do with my life? And and, yeah. and I had made some of those decisions before COVID even hit, but it was just even more um, solidifying for, you know, we were all home and kind of spending this time together in this season. And so, um, anyway, the transition has been really good for my family and, um, you know, keeping ourselves, um, focused on what's important has been our sanity. I, it's, it, in a weird way, when the world was falling apart with this pandemic, we were able to really bring to the surface what matters. And that's why, you know, we've survived this season and actually yeah. have thrived in it. I, you know, yeah. I don't want to make light of how badly other families have fared in this time. I've heard from a friend that divorce rates are through the roof because people are home yeah. and facing each other, which is so sad. Um, but we are just so grateful because God had really had his hand on our household during this whole time. I'm, I can't even tell you, Brandon, how many blessings, you know, the, the boost from, um, uh, when the money was given to us by the IRS, you know, the checks that went out to everybody in America. And then I got this short term contract with my husband's company to kind of help, you know, get them rerunning again. And, um, then a yeah. old boss called out of the blue and offered me an opportunity. I can't, God has just opened the floodgates and it took that nice. leap of faith to leave and, and leave what I was, like I said, I was there 16 years. I grew up there, you know, it's yeah. all I knew. And I thought that was all I was worth. 
And boy, has that been completely, um, that message has been turned over on its head by the Lord in this time. So I'm really grateful for that. Nice. I do think like in some, when we started our business, man, leaving was a, or not leaving our nine to five job to do what we were doing. We knew we were called to do it. We felt like that was, um, uh, it was just in our blood to do it. Uh, yeah. stepping into it was still really scary and it was still really hard. Um, and it continues sometimes. I mean, you know, there's still days that are really hard. Um, but at the same time, you know that uh, the doors open and sometimes doors close uh, at, as well. And what um, through that whole thing, I mean, we met when you were, hey, I need it. I want to leave my job. I want to do this. What attracted you? I'm going to put this in the screen here. What attracted you to working with us? as opposed to, you know, other people, like what, um, what was it that you said, wow, they, those guys are great or what was not so great about it? You know? So Brandon, you're going to laugh because, um, when I found the group, like I said, pack, you know, the, uh, proven Amazon course, Jim Cochran's group, um, I got to know them and they a lot of them are believers and they do this for mm -hmm. the same reasons I do, you know, to create more time and space for your family. And so um, when I discovered that there were options with your 401k, you didn't have to stay in your job, day job mm -hmm. to make this, you know, this thing work. Um, I, your name was mentioned a couple of times um, along with other names. I'm not certain why I called you first because there was other names. There were other names. One other mm -hmm. name, you know, um, maybe as something attracted me to your name. Okay. Let me call Brandon Neely. You know, yeah. um, I think Amanda's name was in there with it. Maybe that's what it was. I was like, Oh good. It's husband, wife, team, you know? Um, so when I called you, um, it was, uh, it was surreal because you had time for me and then you kept calling me back and following up and, and you would take the time to talk and conversate and ask me about, you know, how's life, how's your family. And it was not how I'm used to doing business, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying people in the corporate world are rude, but no one really cares about my home life. <laughs> so I, you know, it just, I was waiting for the catch, you know, why does this guy need to know all this? does he care really about how I'm doing? You know, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I don't know what I was waiting for, but when it went, anyway, in, in getting to know you, I started to discover truly your passion is to help people. And that shows yeah. in the way you do business. But I was just a little skeptical because that's not how most people do business. You know, so I was um, for a while there waiting for like, okay, they're going to ask me for money or I don't know, he's going to, have some really expensive commission that I got to pay. Um, no offense. I, but this should be a testament to how grateful I am that that's not what it was, you know? Um, so what attracted me to working with you guys, your personality alone, the fact that you do truly want to just help people and you see how many people are misinformed about what their yeah. options are financially. And when I got to know that about you, I realized there's not a catch. He's literally spending the time with me because he cares. That's yeah. crazy mind-blowing like i'm not saying there aren't people out there i just that's not common yeah you know most of it is tied to a check and and you know i'm billing you for these hours just so you know that kind of thing so anyway i love that and i i got to know you and amanda a little better and i really started to understand um that i could trust you guys with my finance my finances well that means a lot i mean like when we got into this we didn't realize how divisive even like we do a lot with whole life insurance and building stable uh, foundations. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize that there was so much anger about it and a lot of misinformation. And yeah. uh, I mean, we even tell them now, Oh, well you just do it because you want to make high commissions. I'm like, well, no, I did it because it changed my life and I want to mm -hmm. help as many people um, have stability because if we look at the world now, it's, upside down crazy and why we chose grandma's wealth wisdom and saying okay what did they do back then and you uh, are your greatest investment like in in anything i think 
Um, and so how do we help people as they pursue their business or whatever? Uh, how do we help them uh, invest in themselves? Uh, how do we help them thrive? Uh, and, you know, we want to thrive too. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't want to make uh, money. Um, you but, should get to the work you do that's valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so I feel like that was our, our heart and is, as always going to be our heart. Uh, and that's why we create the programs, the podcasts, the YouTube videos. Um, but man, oh my gosh, you get attacked sometimes and people don't know your story. Um, yeah. and so I like to listen to people's story because, uh, what you think about money as a kid defines a lot of what you think about it now. Uh, yeah. And, and so like, how do we get there and help them each individual figure out what is the life to the fullest to them? What is wealth to them? Uh, money is just one piece of it, in my opinion. So, um, Absolutely. you know, um, that's really good to hear. So, um, I'm encouraged. Um, <laughs> And you mentioned why why you decided to work with us over the the competitors is I guess I mean hopefully we're good listeners. Um, you are. I try I try to be. Um, I would say my wife is a better listener than me, um, <laughs> but you know, uh, she has the the. I don't know. She's a, she's a lot better listener than me. Um, I think we're both pretty awesome. We, we try, we try. So, um, how, how do we meet your expectations in this? So, um, I think you exceeded, I know you exceeded my expectations. One, like I said, you spent so much time with me, just really investing in educating me and helping walk me through what the multiple options were. Um, you even, you know, when we were assessing my financial situation so we could understand truly what all my options were, you were um, even in areas that don't necessarily relate to what, you know, how you are able to monetize your business. You were also able to advise me. You were willing to, you know, on what you would do in these scenarios. So just it was a whole well-rounded perspective. I appreciated your financial advice, even in the areas that you weren't going to manage for me. Um, so that was for one, for sure, appealing to me. Um, but that's what I mean by exceeding my expectations. You know, I, I just, anytime I'm able, if I ever need a question answered, literally I've been able to text you or call you and you get right back to me. Mm -hmm. Either you're answering the phone right away or you're on, you're otherwise engaged and you get right back to me. So having someone who is able to financially advise you at the willingness that you're able to reply to me, that's, that's, Val that's in invaluable. It's insane that you um, have that capacity and I'm grateful. Um, so that's how I'm just, you know, expectation would be this and then you guys have exceeded it by being just so responsive and so willing to just kind of take the time to help me understand, you know, finances are very, um, a lot of people are put off by it because it can be intimidating to understand that. Yeah. And you and Amanda, Amanda specifically has this ability to really clarify and put in very simple terms, you know, very complex financial concepts. So um, that for sure was very beneficial in that whole process as I was learning, you know, what all my options are. But again, the time you invest in me was for me the most um, valuable. Nice. Well, and, and you went through, um, we have a new master class that we've led and um, I know uh, I've been married to Amanda for almost like 14 or 15, almost 15 years getting there. Wow. Um, and, and I know how um, she reads a whole lot of things and she's very, very um, smart. She's been able to run. Uh, I don't know if you know this, when we were at our coffee shop, when we ran our coffee shop, she also run a, ran a nonprofit at the same time. Uh, and we started a chamber of commerce at the same time as well. Uh, no, I didn't. And, and we yeah. had a church plant too. I would not do all of those oh at the same time goodness. again, but, uh, but we, she did all of those things. She's really good at, at juggling things, but she was also really good at communicating 
uh, complex things uh, in a way that um, um, was helpful, I guess. And I remember at a, our five year anniversary party of our coffee shop, someone said, like you, that speech was amazing. You should run for office. And we're like, yeah, that's never going to happen. We're not running for any kind of office. Uh, but maybe some of the stuff that that is a power that she has is her voice. Right. Uh, and she's now using her voice uh, in um, really big ways. Uh, yeah. We're launching the, um, we're calling it the Fife Movement, Financially Independent Female Entrepreneur. Uh, I consider you one of those financially independent female entrepreneur. Uh, and you went through this masterclass that she's worked really hard at. Could you tell us what that masterclass has done for you or what it's, um, what you've gotten away, gotten from it. Um, and she, um, again, uh, I'm just sharing how Amanda is really good at bringing it down. Uh, cause she, I guess I'm not that smart. She is, um, <laughs> and making it easy for me to understand. So if you can do that. Um, but what have you gotten out of that master class and why do you think other people should even consider uh, going through that program? Oh, it was, it was profound. Like I said, she has the ability to take really complex financial concepts, break them down into steps, literal steps, and not even steps that are complicated to accomplish in within 10 to 15 minutes, you were done with your assignment for the day. So that's where um, that's the power there is it takes this really daunting task and makes it these simple, super simple steps. And she with your sheets that you've created already, all you have to do is fill it in. And it wasn't that difficult to achieve, um, you know, this end product where you have this balance sheet of your life at the end of the day, how you're doing financially month to month and the concepts of like saving and, you know, moving from two to 3% inching your way up to, you know, maybe 10% at some time. So at some point, so I, the power in that course, and I know she invested so much time in it, you can tell because of the material and just the content is so rich. Um, I love, though, that although it's rich content, it is not intimidating by any means. And it was super, it was seamless to get through it. Um, so I'm not a finance person. I don't, eh, math was not my strong suit. I'm very verbose. If you can't tell, I'd like to talk. English was more my thing. Um, and she, for someone like me, was so easy to follow. And so I love that I have this end product that this worksheet she multiple worksheets that she put together for the course that I'm able to kind of plug in the numbers for the month and literally see how I'm doing. And I'm not a finance expert, clearly not even close. Um, but that's the tools that she provides in the course. That's something everyone should be doing regularly. And she taught me that, you know, you guys taught me that in that course. And now in, as a result of the course, also, I have a savings plan for my business as well as my personal finances. So now I have an automatic, every time a deposit hits my account in either one business and personal, a portion of it, a percentage goes to savings. So I'm going to keep inching that up like the course teaches. And it's been great. I love it. Well, and I think with all of that, um, you'll be able to reuse those uh, worksheets and the, yeah. the things that will become habit. What we wanted to do is create healthy habits, almost like eating healthy. Uh, you do that, you know, you don't, hopefully you're not thinking and stressing over numbers every day right. and every minute, but being able to say, all right, hey, we did this, we go sit down 30 minutes and, and my numbers, yeah. I can pull up YNAB or I can pull up whatever and be able to, know that your business is successful or success in whatever that means for you. Right. Um, and know that you're also your personal life. And, and the reason we structured the course the way we did is business and personal. Although you have to have two legal structures, um, you are interconnected. Your business and your personal life are interconnected. If the business is stressing you out, it's going to affect your personal life. And if your personal life is stressed out, it's going to affect your business. Right. Um, and we were like, well, um, they're both interconnected. And so how do we make sure we address both things? And so that 
was kind of where we went with this course of saying, okay, here's a business track and a personal track. Uh, let's talk about both of them and have a good framework for both sides. Does that make yeah. sense? It does. That's exactly what I would call it. A really solid framework. It's a foundation of building those healthy habits financially. You're right. The course provides exactly the tools you need to get there, you know, and it was, again, it was so simple that it was there. No, no one should have an excuse not to do it. I really think it would benefit everybody to go through it. Awesome. Well, and uh, again, uh, you've been doing it. It's, it's been fun to see your growth and, and seeing uh, some the challenges that we faced in our brick and mortar business, the frustrations that yeah. we went under. I think uh, she shares some of those things in there. Um, you know, I mean, we had some knockout fights and uh, no, we weren't no knockout fights, just fights um, with each other uh, and some really challenging times just uh, personally uh, with uh, family. Uh, and she shares some of that as well as, uh, you know, the, what kept us sane. And I, I really hope that for the people that go through it, it's like, we, we do, we care for the people that go through, we want to see them succeed, not just in their business, uh, but in their marriages, uh, in their families and, um, uh, all that other, other stuff. Um, you know, the life is more than just one piece uh, of that so yeah. that touches on and not to belabor the point but that touches on exactly why it was a, i was easily able to trust you guys with my financial situation you guys care about that the the personal side of your finances which hmm. really like you said account for if you're stressed in your personal life your business is going to suffer as well um that's my point is you guys do this well-rounded whole balanced experience um working with mm -hmm. you guys has been touching on all facets of my life which clearly they all are connected so you can't just address one side um, but then the other thing i wanted to say i went to business school i have an mba and i didn't learn from that what that course teaches you just isolate the important super simplify it like not to the point of not being able to cover all of what mm -hmm. you have to manage but um anyway i was grateful because the tools i learned from school weren't i i would not compare them to what this course offers like the course makes it super tangible to get there and unfortunately business school didn't do that for me but anyway oh. <laughs> I, I forgot that you went to like business school and, and you probably paid how, how much for, for business school? <laughs> it's painful to say. It's Brandon, I owe like 33000 still on my MBA loan, but it looks great on paper for employers. But again, if you're not interested in looking good on paper for employers, go do this course. It's <laughs> way more affordable yeah. and it literally benefits you way more. You'll walk away with a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that was some of, uh, I had a professor tell me I teach entrepreneurship because I can't do what you do. Uh, and yeah. she had me teach her class and I was like, uh, really? Um, all these people are going to pay a lot to learn entrepreneurship. Um, so I think some is like the people that have been there, done that. Uh, we have we ordered so many t-shirts actually we have many t-shirts uh for our business that we're like we actually have the t-shirt um you know um so what do you yeah <laughs> some of it i have a t-shirt that says mom and pop never stop uh it was a local independent and it has us a, a coffee shop owners i was like oh that's us mom and pop never stop i like that um, and i'm learning we need to stop and that's a thing that is where we're told in business, oh, keep working. And the harder you work, the more uh, more awesome you are. And I'm like, no, uh, spending time with your family and, and doing all that and slowing down, is a, that's a good thing, too. Yeah, so, there it is. Um, um, let's say uh, if you hadn't worked with us, what do you think life would be like? Oh, man. So... I honestly, I don't know that I'd still be at that job. It was getting pretty toxic there at the end. Um, 
I, I, so unfortunately though, I think that I would either still be there because I still wouldn't know what my options are. I think the 401k is just tucked away and not accessible to me. Um, or I would have left there for something similar, you know, just mm -hmm. jumping from one situation just to another, um, back in that rat race and back in that track again. So, um, and without any options, because I, I, you know, wouldn't have known that I had financially other options. So I, I would have just been looking for the next paycheck. Um, you know, I, again, I don't want to speak ill. The place was a, not a bad place. It just, it's, a, it's working for someone else. And at the end of the day, if you wanted to get away from that, you know, I, I didn't know that was an option. And yeah. so if I hadn't found you guys, I would still be in that track, in that rat race. Yeah. Well, and I, again, I think sometimes we have to know uh, when it's the right time, when to, to move on uh, mm -hmm. and do it again in a uh, healthy way too. Right. Uh, when I left my job, um, man, my CEO of the company, it was a big, big company. I told them like what we were doing as a coffee shop. I, I had some like one-on-one -on -one with this big time CEO uh, but he also knew I was leaving and I did it in a way that I didn't burn any bridges. I think that that's important. Um, it's a good way to too, say that. Yeah. Too many people, they, they, and, and I, I, I will say when you be, when you're an entrepreneur, uh, they say, um, you know, burn the bridges so you don't go back. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's something about, you know, if you can't go back, you'll, you'll work really hard if there's no backwards. Um, right. But at the same time, Hey, I want to make sure that if something were to happen or in general, I want to make sure that they still are going to give me a good re reference. Uh, yeah. These are relationships. They might become customers. Right. Um, yeah. And all of that. I mean, I, I actually talked to my old boss, um just last week um really? you know and i haven't worked there in years um that was really fun um and they follow me i mean with social media and all this other stuff they are watching and they're like hey look at look at what that look at what that guy look what that girl did that's amazing. yeah to your point i mean again no hard feelings when i left and, and i agree with that it is a general rule i don't believe in burning bridges like you said these are relationships they're they're people too and you know you were brought together by this company but they could leave the company as well for similar reasons and then you'd have that mm -hmm. much in common you know so i i'm not a, i don't believe in that either and i'm it's interesting you say that because you're right these people could become customers of yours or they could become a networking contact and they could, you know, referral. And, and so I just, I, in general, it's a good practice, I think, to, like you said, and you helped me leave in a healthy way because I had options. When you don't have options, I think that's when people burn bridges, unfortunately. Yeah. That's why this is so powerful. When you know you have options, you have choices. You yeah. get to make that, you know, decision. So. Uh, and I think options are like being able to have those and knowing, um, the, what up? Everybody's different, and what works for you might not work for the other person. And yeah. um, just being aware and clear, and then being able to say, "Okay, I'm willing to take that uh, hit or risk," uh, while all the other people are, you know, are not. And at the same, for me, at the same time, being an entrepreneur, um, man, risk is is a lot in there and and i don't like risking everything in my 401k when i'm risking my livelihood too and so building that foundation mm -hmm. is really important having those relationships that are going to be with you as life changes um from right. pastors to people that you can trust your team under you that can say you know hey uh, you're, you need to straighten up or, uh, you need, you need that foundation. If that makes sense. Um, sure. and I've had some of those, uh, from leaders and all of that through the years. And that, that's what we hope to give people is a solid foundation, uh, because entrepreneurship is a difficult journey, uh, yeah. with 
with valleys and mountains uh, and power and amazement uh, while also frustration. So uh, what would you like to leave people with? If, if you were to, you know, say anything, parting words, what would you leave people with and say, this is where I want to do the mic drop? Um, I, because it was my own journey and my own story, part of my story was not knowing there were options, you know, part of my financial history includes, um, you know, a bankruptcy, a foreclosure on a home. I was married before and it was a rough situation. He was in deep IRS debt and I was mm -hmm. not aware of it. <laughs> uh, did the married filing jointly thing and didn't know what that meant, that I was liable for his debt. I just, I didn't understand wow. any of that. It's, it's, painful but um dug myself out of that took years but i you know i'm on this other side of it and i'm in a great marriage now and you know with my kids and it we have a really good life i've been so blessed and i think that had i been able to talk to my younger self um i would at least say to myself that you have options it, you know i we just get in this if you work in corporate in a corporate structure you think that the 401k is and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, you know, um, but there are other things you can do with your money to invest in it that you can access before you have to retire, you know. So um, not knowing that I would have still been in this rat race pretty depressed. You know, I I'm not I don't want to speak lightly of depression either. I was not clinically depressed, but I, I was pulling my hair out, you know, um, yeah. coming home tired, thinking this, there's got to be a different way. You know, I just, my family suffered for it. I was never home early enough to get everything done in a day, you know, and then weekends were so short and I'd be so sad on Sunday nights. It just was yeah. awful. So I think um, really more than anything, if I could have spoken to my younger self or anyone out there that is in that, you know, cycle, there are so many options outside of what they tell you is available to you, like a 401k. Not that that's a bad thing. Yeah. But there are so many other things you can do with your money that will work for you today and that will give you more freedom and more time in your day and more more access to your family than what what the corporate structure has taught you to believe. That's what well, I mean. And I, I think I remember... Um, I even told you, hey, if you're going to stay at your job, stay, you know, don't do anything yet. Wait, wait for a while um, until you're ready or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I tried, I think, talking you out of it a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, just because I felt like at the time, you know, depending on what's going to happen in the job. Um, one thing I would remember, uh, and you, we can go there or not, but I remember, I think you were on the Dave Ramsey show, if I remember. Yeah. So I had done the Dave Ramsey process all the way through and he was a personal connection. Um, a cousin of mine, his wife worked as his personal assistant. So when I got debt free and this is sadly, I was in that first marriage and, um, you know, I found out he had IRS debt because I had a certified letter delivered to me. It's a long story. Anyway, we climbed out of that debt that first time. And, um, you know, I got, I got to shout, I'm debt free. I did all that. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately after that, I, we were back in debt because he, my husband was holding out on me to not saying everything, not telling me everything. He was a rec recording artist and you're supposed to quarterly pay your taxes, you know, as a self-employed person and he wasn't doing yeah. it. So, um, racking it up really quickly. Like I walked away with more than a hundred thousand in IRS debt. So, um, wow. Yes, I, I was, you know, a huge fan, still am of a huge respecter of, you know, I respect a lot of what Dave Ramsey, um, you know, educates people on. But I also think he has a very specific, um, not the very average American or consumer, I should say, um, you know, could you really benefit from all of the really sound foundational practices that he teaches. I'm not, a, you know, an opponent of anything he says. I'm a huge advocate, still a huge fan. Uh, but for the more um, advanced, if you will, I, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm sorry. For If you're ready for that next step, there is a way to get your money to work for you also. And so I, I don't think all credit is bad. 
you know, and, and this is could open up a whole can of worms, as you know, Brandon. I'm not going to sit here and you know <laughs> take sides or anything. I, I just I'm a huge fan of Dave Ramsey, but I also know that now there's other options besides just um, you know paying off your debt and then not ever using credit again. I think you can use credit to your advantage. I just you have to be smart about it and you have to be educated. So, and I wasn't. I'm not saying I'm smarter than everyone. I got my education. I went and found you and Amanda good financial advisors that will help you walk through those kinds of things. And I, and I do think there's a point of, um, I, and I like what we do is a, we get to say I'm better than debt free, which is a lot more fun. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and you know, some is like you're leveraging some in a, in a healthy way. Um, but also at the same time, uh, that whole debt, all, all debt is bad. I think, you know, uh, not have having consumer debt, a uh, uh, bad thing. Um, overall, if you're buying stuff that, um, or or paying for stuff that you bought five ten years ago, uh, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, but also I own a house, right? I bought a house recently. I will probably have some debt because I didn't have four hundred thousand dollars saved for the house. Right. right. Um, <laughs> and at the other side of things, uh, mm -hmm. I really like profit first and making sure as you set up your business that you put in a tax account that sets you up for taxes and you build that into your plan now early. So that way, as your business grows, you have the money to pay the IRS because the IRS was going to want their money. Uh, I felt like in our business, man, it was that, that silent partner always that always wanted to check. And if you don't, uh, if you're not paying attention, they'll come back for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that profit account, that tax account, I think is important and knowing, Hey, everybody's different. How do we then make sure that we're listening to ourselves, we have a good strategy, we have that one sheet, uh, and we're able to implement in a way that works for us. Uh, but that's ultimately where it comes down to. Yeah. Um, so, cool. Well, thanks for jumping on here. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm really excited for your journey, not just uh, in your business, but like what's happening personally in your family. Um, and where you're going to go from here. I mean, this is just the beginning. Um, and I'm really, really excited to um, see where uh, this was going to lead you. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining uh, Grandma's Wealth Wisdom and the new uh, Financially Independent Female Entrepreneur uh, podcast that is coming out eventually. Um, I'm really excited for that. That is fierce. And I know Amanda is just the person to do it. So I'm so excited. Thank you for having me because you guys have been amazing. And I'm just honored to be here. This was awesome. fun. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm going to uh, talk to you next time. And I'm looking forward to the journey. Me too. Thanks.